My name is Frank Mazzella. I'm the Learning Products Manager for Vision Research. I'm here to present a series of PCC Phantom Camera Control Software Tutorials intended to show you many of the various features and processes incorporated in PCC. In this tutorial, Image-Based Auto Trigger, you will learn how to use the Image-Based Auto Trigger feature. The image-based auto trigger feature should never be used in applications where miss or false triggering cannot be tolerated or where a false trigger could cause harm to people or property. The hardware signaling available in some image-based auto trigger modes should only be used to synchronize multiple phantom cameras together and should never be used to trigger or control any other external device or event. Consequences resulting from system failure false triggering, or misuse of this feature are the sole responsibility of the user. For this tutorial, I'm going to use the Mero 320S Cam2 camera with its recording parameters already defined and the camera's partitions multi-cine feature segmented into four evenly divided memory partitions. To learn more about partitions, please review the multi-cine and PCC Part 1 and Part 2 tutorials. I'm going to position the trigger so the camera will record an even amount of pre-trigger and post-trigger frames for each partition. I'm doing all this because image-based auto trigger is a feature that allows selected phantom camera models to trigger themselves when the image changes in a selectable region of a frame and the event may have some action prior to the camera being triggered. Therefore, I'm going to use some action or motion that takes place in the image to trigger the camera. To learn more about setting trigger positions, please review the Capturing Your First Cine tutorial. I need to ensure that the Cine settings displayed here will be applied to all the multi-Cine partitions. So I'll click the Set All button next to the Lock Cine button, then click the OK button in the Copy Dialog window, and click OK in the Parameter Copy window. With all four memory partitions set up, with identical capture parameters, let's take a look at our image-based auto trigger options by clicking on the image-based auto trigger selector. If the camera is not equipped with the image-based auto trigger feature, the image-based auto trigger enable box will be grayed out or unavailable. In order to set up any of the image-based auto trigger variables that the camera will use to determine if it should trigger when comparing all or a portion of the images, I'll need to enable or check the image-based auto trigger feature. Once enabled, I'll need to specify the area or region I want the camera to use to determine if it should trigger the camera. By default, no region or area is specified. If I click the full button, the camera will make its decision whether or not to trigger itself based upon the movement or changes occurring within the entire image. The area fields, top, left, bottom, right, display the XY coordinates of the upper left-hand pixel and the bottom right-hand pixel of the image-based auto trigger region. They can also be used to specify the image-based auto trigger area. For this tutorial, what I want to do is specify a specific portion of the image to trigger the camera instead of using the full image. Before I do that, I'm going to enable or check the Show on Image option. You'll see why in just a moment. Now, with the crosshair cursor selected, I'll draw a rectangle around the area the camera will use to determine if it should trigger itself. When the pop-up selection window appears, I'll select the Auto Trigger option. Notice a rectangle is now displayed overlaying the image. It is the pixels within this area only the camera will look at to determine when to trigger itself. If I didn't check the Show on Image Enable box earlier, the area rectangle would not be displayed over the image. If you record your images with the Show on Image option enabled, don't worry, the rectangle is not recorded with the images. I also want you to notice that the area fields have been populated with the XY coordinates of the top left bottom right pixels of the area rectangle. 
So why do we want the camera to use just a portion of the image instead of the whole image to determine if it should trigger? Well maybe we know exactly where the changes or action is going to take place at within the image. Or maybe we want to eliminate any movement outside that area that might cause the camera to false trigger. Now I need to specify the various sensitivity requirements the camera uses to determine when it should trigger. The first of these variables is the threshold requirement. The threshold determines how much a pixel within the area rectangle has to change between no change at all and a very high degree of change to be considered as an active pixel that is going to be counted toward meeting the area percentage requirement. I can use the up-down arrows, the slider next to the data entry field, or I can type in a value to specify the threshold. For this tutorial, I'm going to set the threshold to a fairly low change value of 10. The second requirement I need to define is the area percentage. The area percentage specifies the percentage of pixels in the area rectangle that have to change or meet the threshold requirement in order to have a condition to trigger. This could be any percentage between 0 and 100%. I can use the up-down arrows, the slider next to the data entry field, or I can type in a value to specify the area percentage. For this example, 10 to 15 percent of the area is easily going to change. So let's set the area percentage to 10 percent. The last requirement I need to define is the check interval. The check interval specifies how far back in time which equates to a specific number of frames based upon the sample rate setting the camera will look at when comparing the changes in the area rectangle pixels. In this case I'll instruct the camera to look back 50 milliseconds so that will only be a few frames back. There may be some trial and error in setting these requirements so you should never set these up and depend on them for a mission critical experiment. With a little bit of practice you'll come up with the appropriate settings in no time at all. Since this camera is equipped with an internal mechanical shutter, I want to ensure that the advanced settings, start and the recording actions, auto black reference feature is disabled. If it is not disabled, the camera will trigger itself as soon as the camera is placed into the recording mode. The reason this occurs is because the mechanical shutter closes whenever a current session reference is initiated thereby meeting the requirements we just set to auto-trigger the camera. Now that everything has been specified, we're ready to go. Vision Research recommends that you set up and perform a test shot prior to shooting your first real test in the event you need to readjust some of the image-based auto-trigger settings which I have already done. So, let's place the camera into the recording mode. Notice the camera is in the recording mode and is waiting for a trigger. Now I'll auto trigger the camera by creating some movement within the auto trigger area using my test subject, a Nerf bullet passing through the trigger area. Notice the camera has triggered and is now capturing image data into the Cine2 partition awaiting another trigger. But before I trigger the camera again by shooting another Nerf bullet, let's quickly take a look at the Cine I just recorded. When I open the play tab, Cine 1 opens in a play panel. Notice, when I jump to the trigger or T0 frame, you can see the Nerf bullet as it entered the auto trigger region, and I have captured a very good Cine of the Nerf bullet passing through the image. The Nerf bullet passing through the auto trigger region was the event that caused the camera to trigger. Since we set the camera up to record multiple cines, notice the camera is still in the recording mode. When a second Nerf bullet passes through the auto trigger area, the camera triggers itself again, and a second cine has been recorded, and so on and so on.
So that concludes the image based auto trigger tutorial where you learned how to use the feature that allows motion in a specific region to trigger the camera. For in-depth phantom operations, Vision Research offers phantom operations certification training. Please visit our training webpage at www.phantomhighspeed.com service support training. or contact your local sales representative who can be found on our website under the Contact Us pull down selection list for more information about our training sessions or for Phantom Cameras in general.